Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. DLC Wave 4 is in. I've completed it. I know a bunch of you guys have completed it. So now we decide. Did the DLC break the whole game? Well, my thoughts are pretty scattered. So I'm going to do all of you a favor and break this down chronologically for some resemblance of order. Let's go wave by wave and I'll highlight the most beneficial aspects of each wave. Alright, so DLC Wave 1 gave us the Tiki and Three Houses bracelets. These are super epic, and I'm definitely not the only one who thought so. If you just go to the Outrealm Trials, you'll see a ton of teams that are utilizing Tiki's bracelet. Now, her bracelet specifically is worth highlighting because she can give an extra life to one of your teammates. And now, the Three Houses bracelet is like maybe the best dancer move you've ever seen because it gives your unit two to three actions in a single turn. Both bracelets come with bonus stat boosts that give you that much more of an edge. So as you can see, wave one definitely sets us up for success, but I wouldn't call it broken, at least yet. All right, wave two gave us Sorin, Camilla, and Hector. Now all these emblems are powerful in their own right. And if you wanna see how their pairings can solo maps and engage, you can find videos for each of them on my channel. Now, Soren is a dangerous dark magic user that, when paired with Vale, essentially becomes unkillable. Camilla doesn't get as much love, but she has a range of utility that can really be used in battle. She's a Worven Rider with decisive strike, an epic skill that you'll want to take advantage of, but she also has Dark Inferno, which I found to be a really useful way to break down enemy lines by just, you know, setting your enemies on fire. Hector is a strong axe wielder with a tiny brain. And I should add that he also has a big heart. You're gonna pair him with a tanker like Diamant and you have soloing potential for sure. And once again, you can see that video on my channel. That one was super epic. Soloing maps with Diamant. Hector is a beast, definitely use him. For me, I'll be using all three of these in my team. So I would say this one here might not break the game, but it's one darn good wave. Okay, so next up we have wave three. This wave gave us Krom, Robin, and Veronica. Now Krom and Robin are a single emblem that pair really well with any covert unit type. They bring skills like surprise attack, other half, and gig 11 sword. So, if you do have any covert units on your team, you now have a new best pairing for them. Veronica is a hero's summoner, so she can summon fabrications and even emblems, which is pretty OP, I'm not gonna lie, into battle, but it is dependent upon luck. So if you match her with the dragon type, that will become a little bit more likely for you. Uh, she also has Fortify Plus, Contract, and Reprisal, so she could make even a garbage unit viable. Okay, here's the big question though. Did Wave 4 bring anything game-defying into our future? Well, I would say so. You'll get some of the best characters in the entire game in this wave. Completion of this wave gives you Nell, Rafal, and the three wins. Only missing Maver, of course, because you already have him in the main line. Nell and Rafal are both dragon class, and obviously they belong in every battle because of the stat boost that they get. Celestia is just so powerful though that she also must come to every battle in my opinion. So you just went from two dragon classes to four which is huge but in addition to this you can also access two new classes which are Mage Cannoner and Enchanter. Now you can play around with these you can see more info on my channel if you want. You may decide you want to use these you may decide you don't want to, but having the option and the versatility is always going to be a plus for you. All right, so there we have it. We have all the information we need, but what is the conclusion? Does DLC break the game? In my opinion, by the time you're done wave four, yes, 100% it does. But not in a way that I'm upset about. The game on Maddening was really difficult, but a ton of fun. DLC is not easy either, so to access all these perks, you still have to put in a ton of work. In my opinion, 
it's fair and I'm fine with it. But anyway, that's all from me. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please hit the like button so that I can keep on making these videos. And if you have more comments, please let me know down below. Have an awesome day and I will see you in the next video.